What's up guys, it's Commander Wolf. This is the best episode yet. I am so glad to introduce our 27th clone of the week, Commander Wolf. Wolf, keep the communication signal alive. It is our only chance someone will find us. Let's just hope someone's looking for us. Has anyone seen the translator droid? Namia, Namia! Okay, it's fine with me. Whatever. Ah. Hey, wolf! Can you believe it? What? The wolves! You got your wolf pack back! <laughs> yeah, they fight just like the boys. A veteran of the Clone Wars, CC3636 Wolf was a practical strategist and harbored a natural ability for problem solving and strategy. He used his extensive battlefield experience to lead his men through the challenges of combat. Wolf was perceptive, as displayed by his observation of Eeth Koth's hidden hand signals over a hollow transmission. Wolf witnessed and endured some of the worst experiences that the war had to offer, particularly the loss of his entire wolf pack command during the Battle of Abrogado. He was frustrated when he was unable to assist his comrades Sinker and Boost in helping Kuhn confront the Pot Hunters, as he lacked the proper space-proof equipment due to his out-of-armor rotation. In honor of his deceased comrades, he had his unit's original colors changed to remember the men who perished at Abrogado. In several missions, Wolf worked closely with Kuhn's fleet officer Admiral Coburn to coordinate assignments for maximum effectiveness on the battlefield. Wolf favored military service over more tedious assignments, and his patience was tested during the supply mission to Aline by C-3PO, whose overly loquacious manner irked him. In 22 BBY, on his first mission with Plo Koon, Wolf served aboard the Triumphant to eliminate the Separatist warship Malevolence. All of the Wolf Pack was eliminated, save for Koon, Wolf, and Troopers Sinker and Boost, the four were rescued by Jedi General Anakin Skywalker and his Padawan Ahsoka Tano. During the Battle of Korm, Wolf lost his right eye in a fight with Sith apprentice Asajj Ventress. Although scarred and forced to wear a cybernetic eye replacement, Wolf continued his military service to the Republic. Wolf oversaw a three cruiser fleet of Venator class Star Destroyers, providing cover fire for Kuhn to rescue Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, the 212th, and the 501st from Felucia. While serving away from Coruscant, Wolf and Plo Koon remotely witnessed General Grievous's hollow transmission broadcast to the Jedi Temple Communication Center, in which Grievous had captured Jedi Eeth Koth. Wolf noticed that Koth used discreet hand gestures to disclose his location to the Jedi. Thanks to Wolf's observation, the Jedi were able to locate and mount a rescue mission to free Koth from Grievous's clutches in the Seleucami system. When word reached the Jedi Temple that Anakin Skywalker and Mace Windu had been stranded on the planet Vancor by bounty hunters, Wolf, Kuhn, and Ahsoka Tano immediately left with the Wolf Pack to rescue them. With their comrades holding the bridge section in place, Wolf and Trooper Comet scaled the gap between the two ships to rescue Skywalker and Windu. Wolf and Comet freed the two Jedi Generals from the rubble and helped them back to the gunship returning moments before Tano was forced to cut the cables connected to the Endurance. In the course of the continuing war, Wolf assisted Kuhn in the rescue of a Republic strike team from the Separatist-held planet Lola Sayu, which was home to the feared prison known as the Citadel. A four-cruiser fleet of Republic Star Destroyers took Kuhn, Wolf, and Jedi Masters Sacy Tin, Adi Galia, and Kit Fisto to Lola Sayu. With Tin, Galia, and Fisto providing starfighter cover, Kuhn, Wolf, and Comet were deployed to the planet's surface in a space gunship. Just as crab droids were about to overrun the squad, Kuhn and Wolf arrived with their gunship, and Tarkin and the others were able to escape from Lola Sayu aboard the craft. After the Wolf Pack underwent some more armor modifications, Wolf and Kuhn joined Skywalker and Tano on Felucia. To attack Grievous' troops at the source, Kuhn, Skywalker, Tano, Wolf, and Clone Captain Rex proceeded to the droid outpost with their troops. Just as Grievous' reinforcements were being deployed, Kuhn developed a three-part strike plan to divide and conquer the droid's defenses. Once all of the Jedi's forces had been moved into position, Kuhn had the Republic's ATTE walkers open fire on the droid outpost from an adjacent ridge. While Skywalker and Rex battled the droids at the front gate, Kuhn led the way to the top of the base via a force jump, and Wolf and the Wolf Pack followed with their JT-12 jetpacks. They captured the outpost command center and destroyed the remainder of the battle droids. Unbeknownst to her comrades, however, Tano had been captured by Trandoshan hunters during the battle. Although Tano was nowhere to be found at the Felucian outpost the next morning,
Sultana was eventually rescued. Following the victory on Felucia, Grievous led a savages' invasion of the Calamari system. After Mon Calamari King, Yas Kalina, petitioned for the Republic assistance to combat Grievous' invasion, Kuhn, Wolf, a Jedi Knight, and the 104th Battalion were dispatched to reinforce the Calamari system. Wolf and his men were deployed on the comet Iceberg 3 with cold assault gear. The 104th Battalion quickly set up defensive turret platforms along the route to the Republic base. Grievous landed at the outpost to personally lead his forces to victory. Wolf and his men left the task of battling Grievous to the Jedi Knight, who managed to defeat the Separatist General. Upon reuniting with Kuhn, Wolf was alarmed to learn that Yas Kalina had been assassinated. With the King gone, tensions were quickly escalating between the Mon Calamari and their Quarren neighbors. In response to the loss of the Kalina, the Republic dispatched Anakin Skywalker and Senator Padme Amidala to quell the ensuing turmoil on Mon Cala. After the switch to Phase 2, Wolf personally oversaw a relief supply mission to the groundquake-devastated planet Aline, where catastrophic groundquakes had inflicted mass casualties among the native Alina species. With their assignment completed, Wolf and the 104th were instructed to rendezvous with Jedi Master Adi Gallia. Wolf agreed with his troops that they would offload the talkative protocol droid and his companion at the earliest opportunity. Once they had transferred R2-D2 and C-3PO to Gallia's flagship, Wolf and the Wolf Pack rendezvoused with Kuhn's fleet. However, Gallia was soon captured by General Grievous, and Kuhn consequently staged a mission to rescue her from Grievous' Providence-class destroyer. As the group moved on to defeat Grievous' remaining forces, Wolf was subjected to another conversation with C-3PO. Wolf, Kuhn, and the 104th were called in for support when Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano set out to liberate a group of 50,000 Togruta colonists from the planet Kiros, who had been enslaved by the Separatist-backed Zygerian slave empire. The Togrutas were being held at a slave processing facility on Kadava. While Kuhn and clone pilot Warthog led the Starfighter assault on the facility's aerial defenses, Coburn and Wolf commanded the Hand of Justice, an Arcatan's-class light cruiser, which was to be used to rescue the Togruta colonists. Kuhn and Wolf later joined Skywalker, Tano, Rex, and Kenobi aboard the Star Destroyer to debrief the successful mission. Governor Roshti, the leader of the Togrutan colony, even considered foregoing his people's neutrality in the war to join the Republic. While Wolf was serving with the Republic task force, they discovered an entrenched presence of the Mandalorian splinter group known as the Death Watch. The Death Watch leader, Pre Vizsla, took a native village hostage, threatening to raise the entire encampment to the ground if Wolf and his men did not withdraw from Karlak immediately. In 20 BBY, Wolf was invited to attend the Republic Strategy Conference on the Valor space station in orbit of Karita, alongside several other clone commanders, including Neo and Cody. Just as the meeting was about to start, the Separatists attempted to sabotage the conference by ramming the Valor station with the Star Destroyer Renown, which had been laden with Rhydonium ore explosives but the intervention of Colonel Mieber Gascon's D-Squad saved Wolf and his comrades. In 19.1 BBY, the final month of the war, Ahsoka Tano was framed for the murder of Leta Termund, the orchestrator of a bombing at the Jedi Temple. Tano escaped from Republic military custody at the Republic military base on Coruscant, venturing into the Coruscant underworld to search for a way to clear her name. Believing that Tano was responsible for Termin's murder, the Jedi High Council subsequently assigned Kuhn and Skywalker to track down the fugitive Padawan with Wolf and Captain Rex. Upon reaching level 1313's Terminal 24, Wolf and his comrades spotted Tano absconding with Separatist agent turned bounty hunter Asajj Ventress. Upon being cornered and held at a blaster point by Wolf's men, Tano attempted to order them back down, but Wolf refused to let her escape. A brawl ensued, with Ventress activating her lightsabers and cutting through the clone soldiers' blasters. Tano also joined the fight, making sure that she and her criminal accomplice did not harm any of the troopers beyond rendering them unconscious. Wolf grappled with Ventress, grabbing her from behind and lifting her off her feet, but she broke free of his grasp before knocking him into a pillar. Winded like the rest of his men, Wolf was unable to prevent the pair of fugitives from escaping. Wolf and his team caught up with Tano at an abandoned munitions warehouse on level 1315. Although Tano pleaded with Wolf to let her explain, he stunned her unconscious just as Kuhn and Skywalker arrived on the scene. To Skywalker's alarm, Wolf's inspection of the crates revealed that they contained nanodroid explosives of the same model that had been used to bomb the Jedi Temple. Wolf and Rex brought the still son Tano onto one of the police gunships. With the evidence stacked against her, Tano was expelled from the Jedi Order and put to trial for alleged part in the bombing of the temple. Though it was later discovered that fellow Jedi Barrett's Afi was the true culprit, 
Tano, however, chose not to rejoin the order when the High Council offered her readmittance. Later in the war, the Jedi Temple received a distress signal emanating from a ship that was last recorded to be in possession of the late Jedi Master sifo who had gone missing over a decade prior. Wolf and the 104th Battalion accompanied Kuhn aboard a Star Destroyer to investigate the signal's origin. After being outfitted with sandproof gear, Wolf and his fellow 104th troopers proceeded to the moon's surface with a number of ATTE walkers and juggernauts. As Comet issued the order to halt all vehicles, Wolf and Kuhn entered the churning sands outside and found the crash site. They entered the wreckage of the ship, a T-6 shuttle, with Wolf identifying its serial number as 775519. He also noted the substantial scoring along the shuttle's hull, theorizing that the ship must have crashed on the moon a long time ago. When Kuhn came across sifo lightsaber, buried in some sand in the cockpit, he ordered Wolf and their team to excavate the entire wreckage for transport back to Coruscant. Upon receiving Kuhn's initial report of the discovery, the Jedi High Council reopened the investigation into the death of sifo who, as the Kaminoans had revealed to Obi-Wan Kenobi just prior to the Battle of Geonosis, was responsible for commissioning the creation of the clone troopers. Wolf survived the Clone Wars and at some point removed his control chip. In the years after the Empire's birth, Wolf was living with Captains Rex and Gregor in a modified ATTE on Silos, having managed to remove their control chips that forced them to follow Order 66. Several years before the Battle of Yavin, Wolf made sure that Rex was unaware of transmission from his old friend Commander Tano. They were then contacted and approached by the Spectre's rebel cell who had been sent by Ahsoka Tano to acquire locations of Outer Rim bases for the Rebellion. When Kanan Jarrus identified the clone and drew his lightsaber, Wolf identified him as a Jedi and assumed he had come for revenge, prompting him to open fire on the Jedi. Rex managed to break up the fight before Ezra Bridger revealed that Ahsoka Tano sent them. Unbeknownst to his brothers, Wolf secretly tipped off the Empire to the presence of a Jedi on Silos. Subsequently, Wolf drove the ATTE as the clones and ghost crew went hunting for Jupas, using Zeb as bait. As Sabine Wren was granted access to the clones database, she discovered that one of them had alerted the Empire. Rex realized Wolf tipped them off, who regretfully admitted to alerting the Empire to protect his comrades from persecution for helping the Jedi, as well as having hidden the messages that Tano had sent Rex. Rex then managed to convince him that the Empire was the enemy. After Rex shot down a probe droid, the group prepared for an imminent invasion from the Empire. While the Spectres urged the clones to come with them and join the rebellion, Wolf and his fellow clones insisted on staying behind to delay the Imperials so that the Ghost crew could escape. Wolf and his companions rode their ATTE against Agent Callus's three ATAT walkers. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the clones were determined to go down in a blaze of glory. However, Bridger convinced his fellow rebels to help the clones. Following the battle, Rex joined the rebellion, whilst Wolf and Gregor stayed behind on Silos, taking the remaining ATAT walker for their new home, naming it Jupa Base. In one BBY, Wolf and Gregor then met with Rebel Alliance General Hera Syndulla, Captains Callus, Hondo Onaka, Rex, and bounty hunter Ketsu Anya. There they asked them to join them in liberating Lothal from the Empire. Both Wolf and Gregor agreed, with Wolf reasoning that he had followed Jedi into battle before. After sneaking past Lothal's blockade, Wolf, Gregor, and Callus then assisted Ezra and the others in capturing Governor Arinda Price and defeating her forces, who had assaulted the Lothal Resistance cliff base. During the liberation of Lothal, Wolf stayed behind at the Lothal rebel base with Mart Madden and Visago in order to pick up General Syndulla and the other rebels once they had completed their mission to launch and destroy the Dome, the center of Imperial power on Lothal. Wolf and his comrades were attacked and knocked out by Grand Admiral Thrawn's pet, Ruck. However, they were saved by the White Loth Wolf. After awakening, Mart revealed to Wolf and Visago that Ezra had assigned him a secret mission. The rebels departed aboard the Ghost and flew into Lothal's upper atmosphere where they transmitted a signal on frequency zero. This drew a large pot of Purgle, which wiped out Thrawn's seventh fleet. Wolf, Mart, and Visago then evacuated the surviving rebel strike team after they succeeded launching the dome into Lothal's atmosphere and detonating the Imperial base. This ushered the end of Imperial rule on Lothal. Despite this victory, Wolf and Rex's comrade Gregor perished during the fighting in the dome. Real quick, check out Thalus Art on Instagram. I'll put his link in the description below. He made this custom Commander Wolf art to celebrate him as Clone of the Week. Let me know in the comments below which clone you want to see and hit that like button. This is Commander Wolf, signing off, and as always, woof, woof. Oh shit, you're the Undersea 900 European Smoking Dick of What the hell is an aluminum falcon?